Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to deviate a little bit from the uh, normal RC car review and instead we're going to play with some carbon fiber. Uh, specifically, I will be making a chassis for my uh, Turnigy Trooper. Um, this is a great candidate for a carbon fiber chassis because it just has a flat um, aluminum plate chassis. Flat except for the uh, kick up at the front. Uh, so we're going to try to duplicate that. Um, first things first, this is kind of the, the poor man's version of how to do this. If you check on YouTube, there's a, a million different ways to do this. Um, a lot of guys are using vacuum bags or autoclaves or prepreg, or there's all kinds of ways to make carbon fiber plate. I'm doing basically the poor man's version. Uh, now, I'll cut just about every corner that I can and still get a decent product. If you go too far and try to avoid some of the steps I'm doing here, uh, you're going to end up with a, a poor product. So first of all, what you're going to need um, your epoxy resin uh, and the hardener that goes with it. Um, I'll be using today some 3K toe uh, 2x2 twill carbon fiber. It's a really nice looking carbon fiber. I believe it's uh, 5.7 ounces per yard. Um, now carbon fiber is expensive, so in order to get around uh, some of the cost associated with it, I will also be using this um, 18 ounces a yard uh, ro woven roving. Um, it's basically a space filler. It also provides quite a bit of strength, but it's not all that pretty. It's not all that great to work with, uh, but it is cheap. And if I build up a four millimeter carbon plate with just carbon fiber, it ends up being like 17 layers or something. This uh, fiberglass really cuts down on that. Uh, other stuff you're going to need, uh, Johnson's paste wax. Um, there's all kinds of uh, other mold release waxes that you can get. This is like eight bucks for the whole tub of it at your local hardware store. So if you don't have access to uh, real mold release, um, you can go that route. Gloves brush, a couple of mixing cups, uh, stir stick, this is just a tongue depressor, and um, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, some weight and um, some cookbooks, and we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, so first step, we're going to apply some wax to our plate glass. Oh, it's another thing you need, plate glass, and in this case, I have it hinged in the middle with some uh, painter's tape. That's so that we can get that front angle on the uh, on the chassis. So first thing we're going to do, I've already waxed this a couple of times, but we're going to wax it again. Uh, just a fairly light coat. Wax on, wax off. Karate Kid style. Okay, now I've applied my wax and wiped it off a couple of times now. Uh, so we are ready to mix our epoxy. Um, be sure to inspect your glass really closely. Make sure there's no impurities on it. Anything that's on this glass is going to transfer over to the face of your very beautiful carbon fiber plate. So any excess wax, um, swirl marks are going to transfer, uh, little pieces of fiberglass that, that got caught on there, dog hair, anything. So inspect your glass and reinspect it. Um, you want an even film of wax on it. Uh, on mine, I can just barely see it, uh, and that should work out great. Now, first step, this is the bottom plate. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, in order to get the top kick up, we're actually going to use these um, wooden door shims. Uh, I've already measured out the angle. It takes about four of them. Uh, that's going to vary depending on your buggy or, or the chassis that you're making. Um, when I made one of these chassis for my BZ222 buggy, it took half a dozen shims to get the desired angle. So, there we got it propped up. Now we're going to brush on a fairly light coat. Take our first piece of carbon, and we're going to lay it right on here, just like so. Try to 
to square it up so that the pattern looks all nice and pretty. You especially have to try to get in this little crease here that we formed when we uh, created that angle. Make sure to push it down in that exact spot. And then we're just going to kind of massage it until the the resin permeates up through this fabric. So, okay, next layer. Okay, now we didn't really need any extra resin on that first, the second layer, because there was so much that came up through the fabric on the first layer. The second layer. Third layer is going to be this layer of fiberglass. Okay. Now here's something that I have not yet tried, but we're going to try it here. You'll notice in this, the weave is actually at a 45 degree angle. Um, now I did that because in my last plate that I made, uh, the thing was super strong in bending uh, fore and aft and uh, side to side, so longitudinally and laterally it was super stiff. But when you twisted it and put some torque on it, it actually seemed kind of weak to me. And I am hoping that by putting a couple layers of uh, of this stuff at an angle, it'll really stiffen it up torsionally. Um, now, ideally, I would have used carbon for that, but as I think I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is the cheap way to do it. Okay. Now, in the middle, we have another layer of carbon. Doing another 45 layer. Now, next layer. And this is the last layer of fiberglass. Alright, so we're down to the last two layers of carbon to make it look pretty. Okay, last layer. Again, this is the pretty layer, so make sure that you get your weave straight. No stray fibers anywhere. Not only is it structural, but it also looks good, so let's try to keep it that way. Okay, make sure it's all smooth, because this Pretty important step. Pivot there. And now we're going to squash it. And you kind of start from the middle and work your way out. And as you do that, you can see the resin start to make contact glass and squish. Any air bubbles are normally pretty easy to see. So I mentioned earlier that we were going to use cookbooks. Here's why. We're going to put a cookbook there and a, cookbook here. a couple of 7.5 pound dumbbells. And we're going to set it there and that's it. Now, the hardest part, we're not going to touch this for 24 hours. And if that sounds easy, it's because you've never done this before. Trust me. 
Okay, everyone, it's been 24 hours now. Hopefully you all waited. Um, I waited almost the whole 24 hours. I actually <laughs> couldn't even wait to turn on the camera before I popped the first uh, piece of plate glass off. So let's, uh, let's see how we did. Um, first of all, if you did not wait uh, the full 24 hours, it's not the end of the world. Um, you'll just find that it's quite difficult to pry this stuff loose if you don't wait long enough. Uh, if you only wait six, seven hours or so, uh, this stuff, it'll feel hard to the touch, like it's set, but when you go to pry it off, it's actually really stuck hard to the glass. That's, that's how this little glass chip happened. If you wait longer, um, it actually has a tendency to release a little bit more, and hopefully, with any luck, when I drive my wedge in here, you can see it. I don't know if the camera shows it, but you can see it separating from the uh, from the glass there. And it should, with a little coaxing, pop right off. If this glass does break, um, this 12 by 16 piece of glass was, I think, six dollars at uh, at Lowe's. And this uh, 10 by 12 piece of glass was about three bucks. So it's not the end of the world if it does break. Uh, now in this case, I have a little bit of a challenge here, right where that seam is, but uh, not too big of a deal there it went. Okay, so what I'm using here is a, uh, where is it? there it is, standard razor blade, a long one. And um, this seems to work out really well if, uh, put this and slide it underneath there it'll break it right off not the razor blade but the, the carbon fiber and so now we've got a pretty good um, separated section there and once it starts to go yeah now it's going it really um, it really gets big in a hurry hopefully I can get a piece of wood under there now yep there we go now we got it Okay, so all you got to do is get something under there and then drive this piece of wood a little further. And that's just about it. The thinnest shim that we have and stick it under and pop. There she is. Just like that, we have this beautiful carbon fiber plate. You can see um, there are a couple of voids. Um, it's not quite perfect. Uh, the last one that I did was a little bit better. It was pretty much perfect. Um, we can either fill those in with resin uh, in a little bit uh, just to make them look a little prettier. Or, you know what, I'll probably just leave those. They're minor enough. It's not that big of a deal. We also end up with this seam here where the uh, the kick up is for our um, for our front suspension. Um, a razor blade can trim that right off, and we'll do that in the next video, uh, as well as cutting everything out to make this an actual usable chassis piece. But for now, here's how you make carbon fiber, um, and I am pleased to report this is definitely the stiffest one that I've made so far. I don't know how much of that is due to the uh, the 45 degree angle um, fiberglass that I put in there or if it's just because there's extra layers but this it's it's pretty stout. I'm a pretty big guy and I can't break that. So anyways that's it. That's about the cheapest way I know how to do it. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching.